Yeah, I think Madam Ophelia, you are very, very welcome. I think it's now 7, 4 p.m. Mr. Mr. Prince, would it be okay if we start? Um, can you give me a, another two minutes? Okay, boss. Okay. Okay. Lawyer Barima live on Facebook. Thank you so much, Chairman, for joining. So grateful. Those watching us from Facebook, we are so, so grateful. And we are looking forward for a very wonderful session. And in the next two minutes, we are going to start. So you can share, you can tag some of your friends to also participate because I believe this is going to be a very, very educative section where we are going to learn a lot. Thank you so much. Mr. Francis, you are very welcome. Adams, you are very, very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Chief. Okay, okay. So I think um, once again, I would like to mute everyone or you can, uh, you can actually mute yourself so that we don't distort the flow. I think, okay, everyone has done that. And for those who are watching us live on Facebook, I am, I'm very, very grateful for your time and for your patience whilst we wait for others to join us here. And before we commence, I would like to say a very big thank you to Mr. Prince. And I'm so grateful for your time and also for your patience with us in order to get this moving. So basically for some two months, we've been working on developing leadership competence through an initiative that is being run by Leaders of Change. 
And as part of this, we feel that um, with the outbreak of COVID-19 and how the world has changed so drastically, it's important that maybe we can use this period to actually learn from people and also grow ourselves. And because I strongly believe that when we, when, when we are able to change, things around us too can equally change. And for that reason, we've been working so hard by getting mentors on board who would share ideas with us. And also it's a platform for networking because maybe after maybe the section, someone can reach into maybe your email and if there's any help in terms of coaching or sharing ideas or anything that would actually help the person develop, we can also assist. So I would like to say a very big thank you for honoring this program and for making time for us. And then before I hand over the platform, I would like to introduce you officially because those who are watching us on Facebook would like to know more about our guest tonight. So I'm going to read a little bio about our guest and I'm hopeful that after this we can commence. So I'm starting. I hope you're not, I hope you're not reading that. Long. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll read half. <laughs> okay, so... um. Mr. Prince is a leadership coach, an author, development worker with a passion for harnessing the energies of young people to tackle social problems through volunteerism and community service. He's a program coordinator at Data Bank Foundation, where he doubles as coordinate, coordinator for the African Leadership Initiative West Africa. At Data Bank Foundation, Prince runs leadership mentorship mental health and literacy initiative with a volunteer network of about 250 youth in Ghana. The African Leadership Initiative West Africa, an international leadership fellowship between Data Bank Foundation and Leap Africa in Nigeria, and part of a global network of fellowship under the Aspen Institute of, in the US. As a development worker, Prince pioneered the lesson learned global project. I think it's a very, very interesting project that would, I would be glad if we can also reach out to read more about the lesson learned. So this project has brought together volunteer storytellers from every country in the world on a campaign that has the potential to reach millions worldwide. He also founded Placenta Leadership Foundation to digitize communal labor into a volunteer initiative called the Ahum Fama. Ahum Fama had a continental mission of instilling the value of service and patriot patriotism in African communities through volunteerism. He is the lead consultant of Palm Nali Center, a leadership development organization. Prince has both institutionally and personally impacted over 50,000 young people in Ghana for the past eight years of his development work. And Mr. Prince has also traveled across the country and he has also held various development seminars, conferences, workshop and projects for young people in Ghana and across. And he's published two books. And the first one is A Leader at Last. And I think the second one, it's workbook, LGS workbook, yeah. So he has also received several recognition for his dedication to leadership in Ghana. And in 2019, he was named one of the future of Ghana's top 30 pioneers and innovators. He has developed global youth development presence from several international initiatives and program. He is married with one children. That's the goal we want to achieve one day. So Mr. Prince, thank you so much and Please, you can kindly have the platform. Thank you. Um, it, it really is my pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, and as for the fantastic work, um, I must be frank, I'm just one of those, you know, like the many who will silently be following the, the work you do. Um, and for a very long time, I've been meaning to find a way to get you in my net. Interestingly, this evening, you got me in your net. And it's great to be here. Thank you to everyone who, who has made time this evening. I, I'm sure you are going to have a very fantastic time. 
Um, Ernest, am I able to share my the presentation? Yes, boss, please, you can kindly do. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, I do hope um, we can all see the screen. But uh, this evening, um, I'm going to attempt to kind of just throw perspective to um, what most of us um, are really uh, familiar with. Um, I've done a, a couple of things about leadership, and it's it's over the years going to be a very passionate area, and um, and that is because um, I mean around the world today we can see we can see that the whole world is um, having only one problem, and we can literally say the whole world is in the same hospital under one diagnosis, which is the COVID nineteen. But there is also a need of the world that is not going away. I think it's been more than a pandemic because I can tell for a fact, it's a need when you were a child, you heard a lot about. It still remains a need today. And it's the kind of need that when we dare to, to be of use or when we, when we dare to supply, we quickly move forward. And that's the subject of, of leadership. And so this evening, um, under all that is happening around the world, um, I'm sure that you, we, we've been wondering, you know, how to really kick in to be more uh, structured about the way we go about our lives, considering the kind of disruption. And from the Lessons Learned project, as, as Ernest mentioned, I mean, I've been over the past two to three months been engaging people from several countries. I mean, countries, uh, frankly, I didn't even know existed. And it is pretty clear we all have the same problem. So how, how do we navigate around the problem? I think um, at the center of it all, again, is the subject of, of leadership. You know, when we were kids, whenever you heard the word leader, um, I'm sure you were just sitting by your parents and they were watching the evening news and they were talking about the politicians. And they were saying, are these leaders, these lead we, Ghana needs leaders, you know, we need to have good leaders. The same, the conversation has not changed. It looks to me, every single person on earth is looking for somebody they can call a leader. And um, especially in a time like this, how then do we switch, um, you know, our leadership guard on to make sure that we, so we are surviving what is happening? And to me, I think it is an urgent need today. Uh, gone were the days, again, that leadership will just be thrown here and there because of the evening news. But uh, under the COVID issue, there is an urgency of leadership. And it is urgent because, and it is also needful because you see at the highest expression of ourselves, wherever you are, you are on your journey, your purpose destination will always be a place where your influence will be needed the most. Your purpose destination will always be a place where your influence will be needed the most. And the reason is, it's also the reason why we need to begin building our leadership uh, progress. It's the very reason why leadership is important as subjects for all to study. Because when you finally get to your purpose destination, you will need to lead. But I would like to kick in with this, that it, it looks like um, every great breakthrough or whatever has happened significantly in the world happened at the cost of convenience. I mean, there are a lot of times, if you are a believer in the Bible, there, there are a lot of scriptures we quote, we quote smiling, but these were scriptures that were written by people who were crying. Some of them we quote, uh, you know, jubilating, but they were, Scripture, scriptures that were written by people who were in prison. And it's, in life has proven to us yet and again that um, really our ultimate power lies behind 
or lies behind our ability to happen, whether uh, life is convenient or not. And the COVID situation provides us a very perfect uh, time for exactly that. Um, we are in a time where uh, the reason why the agency, there is agency in terms of not just leadership, but personal leadership, is because this is the time, the kind of year that the citizen cannot wait on the government because it is clear that even the government has to take care of themselves. And this is the kind of year that the students cannot wait for the teacher. We are aware, we even heard a case where teachers, um, well, it's alleged that teachers did not attend to a student because they thought the student had the COVID. It's the kind of year that the worker cannot wait for the employer. It means that it's so important and need now that people take control of over their lives. You cannot be at the mercy of your employer anymore. We have seen a lot of people who go home around this time. And again, even if you, you are a believer, again, it's a time that you cannot wait on your preacher. Um, we have examples of preachers who unfortunately have had to move on uh, because of the issues surrounding the COVID-19. But so what uh, personal leadership really uh, means. I mean, we can Google it and find it, but on top of my head, I didn't want to come in here with any definitions, but really it is just taking, taking charge of your life. If the student cannot wait for the teacher, if the citizen cannot wait for the government, what is the way forward? And this evening, um, my plan is to dare you to move beyond, you know, the many uh, things we have heard to more take charge over your life. And I'm going to do this um, by sharing uh, just six items. Um, that more like brings personal leadership practically to us and um, so that we can really uh, begin that journey. Most of the time, we think that we are at the mercy of life happening to us. But the reason that the truth is that if you can dare to move beyond yourself, for every single person, when you begin your personal leadership journey, you cannot be stopped. People who have begun their personal leadership journeys cannot be stopped. They may be people who we do not know. They may be people who have not gone to school. They may be people who don't even have the means, but it's a journey that transforms a person totally. How then, or where do we, we begin from when we talk about personal or making a personal leadership journey. And um, personal leadership is more, again, you are taking it, you are taking charge over your life. And so now you are moving away from always having somebody in the driver's seat. Today you pay attention to your hands more than you ever, you know, pay attention even to your head. It's funny, but we, we forget that our head you know, the brain is much more important than the hands. There are people who don't have hands, but because of their brains, they are billionaires. But we seem to pay attention, so much attention to our hands these days that we forget that, you see, it's a prompt that there's a part of the body that can actually be that important. And that needs our attention the most. And that is our brain. So I, I'm glad that at least Ernest put this together so that we can all have the experience because it's, it's a challenge and it's a training or it's a, it's a pushing of the brain to really uh, give our best. I think that for people to begin their personal leadership journeys, the first thing they need to do is to clarify their information sources. To clarify their information sources. You see, where you are getting, we are all results of what we have heard. I am who I have given attention to. I am what I have given attention to. It is fair to say that I am my attention. So are you. So what we want to do, first thing when it comes to going down our personal leadership, being in control over your life, is to determine your source of information. Because whether we like it or not, the information will shape uh, what we do. So what you want to do is to get a book. You have a book that you have actually written down 
Okay, so this is my personal leadership book. I want to begin with this chapter of clarifying where I get my information from. You are determining, for example, some websites that can be trusted in terms of information. We've seen it, COVID-19, a lot of people have died because of misinformation. So having clarifying your source of information, I mean, take COVID away, is still extremely important. There are people, well, if you, you remember, when we were young, we were told that uh, if, you, if you play football, you are not serious. But today, our parents can see that again. Because some of our unserious friends are now doing fantastic work. Why? Because they still play, they, they follow their, their, their passion to play football. So you want to be sure that where your source of information is as, as, is as correct as you know, as can be. And the reason is because of this cycle. I think in this COVID um, season, I've been sharing this slide a lot in, in most of the conversations I have because I think this cycle um, kind of runs our life. It really runs our life. You see, for the information we have received builds what we call beliefs. The beliefs give us the potential to do the potential, you know, kind of energizes us and leads us to take action. And then we get results. So when you get results, there's a tendency to hold on to that belief. And so the cycle continues. For example, there are people who, you know, maybe for some reason, um, when a, a lady gets a broken heart and then, you know, or somebody tells her, oh, she, she can take that as a belief and be telling herself, Charlie, as for, as for men, they are wicked, though. they are so wicked. But I see by that statement, it quickly triggers a certain potential. The potential is that deep within, in different environments, the person still holds on to that belief. And so if there are you know, males there who are well-meaning, the person may still withdraw. So it means that potential is leading to an action. And sometimes, for example, if you put such a lady on a project with a male, she may not turn up because she'll be thinking in her head, oh, that's what that's what men, they are, they are no wicked. I am even sure he's thinking about, you see, they make up stories. And then by that action they take, it gives a result. When the when the person, the guy gets angry because she didn't turn up, she will still hold on to her belief and say, aha, uh -huh, I told you. You can't you ask for men, they are not nice. So did you see how she he talked to me? Forgetting that it is her own beliefs leading to the potential, leading to the actions taken to the results. Again, let us take somebody who didn't go to school. There are people who maybe have made it, but they didn't go to school. When you go to such a person and tell him, Charlie, if you don't go to school, you can't make it. It, it will be funny to them. And because they are so firm in their belief that school or not, you, we can make it. You see, it leads to a certain potential. They work with the belief that, um, um, and with the with the um, with the view that there is opportunity out there they can grab. And with that potential, it most of the time leads to action. The person takes a lot of action, knowing very well that you know school cannot stop them. And as soon as they take the action, they get the results. So such a person will come to you and say, "Hi, I told you, I told you that school." school or not, but I, I've still been able to make it. So this cycle continues, but most importantly, the reason why you need to establish your sources of information is because of these two words, the truth and the reality. Because your truth or reality will determine the quality of your beliefs and your beliefs will run your life. Truth can be reality. Reality is not always truth. A typical example is when somebody, if you have somebody in, in a room who is making the noise of a dog, you can be outside the room and say, ah, but who brought the dog into this house? And the person, the sound, the imitation can be so close that you, you, you can challenge that, oh no, that's a dog in the room and be wrong. And so in that scenario, you see your reality was because the sound, it sounded like a dog. That's a dog in the room. But the truth is that we can even have recorded sound 
played in the room and it will sound just like the dog. So whatever truth or reality we hold on to in our lives, in every area of our lives, whether it is career, there are people who say, Master, these days, if you don't know somebody, you can't get a job. That's a reality. There are people who don't know anybody in, the, in an organization, but they get jobs. There are people who are saying, Charlie, that's what this COVID is. This COVID season, you, people who cannot buy your products, so they don't buy. But hey, we have heard the news. COVID has made Amazon even richer than uh, not the normal days. So you see, there, there, there are certain realities we hold on to, and we guard those realities as if they are truths. But because they are just our personal realities, they then begin to interfere with our beliefs, and then it goes through that cycle. So I think that most importantly, the first thing you want to do is to establish which source I am, I am, I am going to vouch for. The Christian will say, okay, so me, I, the Bible will be my source. Okay, if I'm looking for news, I'm going to go to my joy online. Okay, if I want to read about personal development, I'm going to Harvard Business Review. Okay, if I want to, do, so you are establishing certain sources for yourself that you are going to now jump on to, to move on. And I have these to share as uh, what I call custodians of truth. Um, we, you want to know the truth. And actually you want to know the truth quickly. And I think that these are some custodians of truth. Um, when you consider even going to school, I mean, school is doing only one thing. We go to school just so that we can make less errors. So that, that we can at every point of decision making, make a decision that is closest to the truth, that is cool. And so all these, these um, uh, what I call custodians of truth, um, we may not have the time to go through, but um, I think that they have sources of truth that when held on to will be very meaningful and will give you beliefs that will go through that cycle to give you the best of results. The second one, is um, I think um, for, for us to live, you know, our personal leadership around this time, after establishing our sources of information, we want to orient ourselves, ourselves about learning. We want to change how we view learning and even the definition of learning. And for me, um, over, over the past few months, um, um, what I think from, from, from um, um, the research I've been doing is, is that you see learning is just helping us to make uh, to make the best decision that is closest to the truth, closest to the truth. So that learning is not just limited to getting a job. When you sit down to learn, the days where you we had to sit to just learn for school or to learn for 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 a career, that it is long gone, and COVID is proof that this is the time to actually orient ourselves and call our learning a learning for life. Because in times like this, look at, I mean, today we are having a, a session on, on Zoom. Um, if we're going about our normal business, I'm not sure, no university will teach this. So you just want to learn and pick every skill that will make you move on better uh, as you move along. Learning for life is extremely important. It's also important because you see, we call this the new normal. Me, I think that actually this new normal is, is the normal 30 years from now. 30 years from now, most of the things happening now were, were bound to happen. Let's take the COVID out. But every single disruption that has happened was going to happen 30 or even less. There were going to be schools that were going to go online. There were going to be jobs that were going to be lost. There were going to be a lot of you know, shifts that were going to happen 30 years from now. And so really, even though it is, a, it is a disruption and we call it the new normal, it is a normal for your kids and maybe your kids and kids. This is a normal. And for us to survive in that normal, maybe it's going into the future, we want to learn as much as possible, take learning personally so that we can move away from, you know, limiting beliefs because of what we do not know. And I usually say this that, you see, if in 1988, 
you believed, if in 1988, if you believe that one plus one is three, one plus one is three, and in 2018, you still thought that one plus one was still three, it would have meant that you have lived 30 years with a lie. And you see, even though it is 30 years, it has still not changed the fact that you do not know. But the good news is that when you commit to learning for life, you don't have to wait. Learning In learning, you don't have to. You can actually learn things that will take somebody the next 10 years to know. And that can only happen when we shift away from the traditional way of learning and call our learning learning for life. So that is what you want to do with the sources that you have established you know, in, in, in the book or whatever uh, you have captured. The next one, I think um, what you want to do is, is, is also to pay attention to character. And for me, when it comes to the issue of character, I think that, hey, we, we know what is a wrong character and we know what is a right character. And so you want to look out there for people who are living the values, you know, of what we call the best character and just copy. You don't need to think, just, just copy how they are. I mean, and it's, 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 it's funny that um, even though most of the time we don't want to use the word copy around, around ourselves at all. I mean, in school, we're told that when you copy, you are in trouble. But look around you, the, the easiest way to learn is to copy. The easiest way to learn is to copy. Is the reason why when you when we were little kids, you see, our parents were taking care of us, we were doing the things our parents were doing. And I put this picture here just to prove that I mean, even for animals, they 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 seem to follow the parent to do everything that the parent is doing. It's more like a photocopy of, of the other. And I mean, if you, if you look into the Bible, even human beings, as much as yes, uh, or, uh, we have our originality. Human beings are not as original as we may seem. It, this may sound strange to you, but uh, when you check the Bible, well, you notice the Bible says God created the human being in whose image? In God's image. So like, even that is a copy. So it's a copy of God made. And so the, the point I'm trying to make here is that when it comes to the issue of character, you can look around. There are people, um, for example, wherever you work, you know there are people that even when you see them, you can you can tell if you had your own job, you would employ them. And it is because of you know certain character traits you have seen in them. So what I'm saying is that when you see some of these things, don't go and read a book, just write it down and try and lay those values. And in a in a time like this, you want to do it intentionally and personally. And so what you are going to do is to write down certain characters or people that if you had your own job, you would employ. When you write the names that you can write down why you would employ them, it will come out reason why you think, oh, this, this, this guy here, if, if, if he was in my company, will help. And then by those traits that you have written, be intentional to live them as you move along every single day. I also think that when it comes to the issue of competence, you should flow. Um, flow, flow, just flow. Competence as in whatever skill you are good at, this is the time where you want to pay attention to the skills you are good at. And hey, every skill you are good at, there's a way to sell the skill. If you don't know how to sell it, it doesn't mean it cannot be sold. It's because you don't know yet how. But if you want to find answers, you will. We have seen people sell, you know, one day I was in a, um, a long time ago, I was in this program, I was kind of um, helping somebody, I, I can't mention her name here, um, you know, sell, sell tickets for an event and the tickets were not being sold. I remember a, a statement that a friend of hers made, this is years ago. The man was like, Prince, um, even even poison, even poison, it is sold, and people are able to buy the poison and drink and die. So you see, whatever competence you have, it is sellable. But are you flowing in it? In, in it, that's the question. And to flow means that look at how water will trade from the top down. 
most of the time we say that people who are talented, Michael Jackson, these people, we, can, we say that they are hardworking. But uh, to an extent, I beg to differ a little. You see, they are hardworking, yes. But is it hardworking when you are flowing in the thing that you, the thing you love to do? For example, take Serena Williams. I'm not sure when she is training, she calls that hard work. I mean, she will, she enjoys her training as much as her, 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 her performance on the day. Michael Jackson, whether he's, tra he's training in the studio or on the stage, enjoys the most why he's flowing in his competence. And when you are flowing, it's so easy. People can connect better with you. So there are some of us on this call, you know how to write. Please, begin. Why, why are you waiting for years before you publish a book? You are waiting for too long. This is the time. You are, even COVID has locked you down at home. You should be able to release a book by the time they open or, or life comes back to normal. So you want to flow in your competence. And today, Michael Jackson is dead and he's even making money dead. I intentionally put Steve Wonder here because the man doesn't even have sight, but he makes a lot of money. Why? He's flowing in his competence. When you're flowing in your competence, it's just so easy a flow. You are like water from a fountain that is coming down. You don't need to be pushed much. You know, and deep inside, you can tell that this is my thing. And you want to pay attention to that. So from the characters, then the character you have listed, now you want to list your competence and spot intentionally which areas you can practice this competence. Maybe you know how to write. And um, at the workplace, they always tell you to do something else. You can, you can, you know, tell them, okay, may, let me just attend to this writing. At least I'm working from home. Let me, let me attend to this. Maybe you know how to, whatever you know how to do, find a means, especially in these times, to just flow. But when you are flowing that way, there's not much resistance. And really there's joy when you are flowing and there's not much resistance because this is your thing. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, talent, um, which is more about the competence, except you see the competence, there's a lot of them. I, I just changed the word to talent, just to give focus to one of the competence that you may uh, call your strongest. And it is so needful now for you to actually pick out one of them and make sure that you are totally immersed in that one. So for example, if it's a, if it's a subject you want to know, um, uh, you want to know about health or you want um, maybe you, the kind of area or your talent is singing. If it's a singing by now, you should have you know, your sources of, of, of information should contain some websites where you can pick some sounds, some, you know, um, specific people who do this better that you want to learn from. Actually, you have learned how the kind of character, the values they have committed to their work and you are doing the same. You are looking at the, com the other competences that even make singing better and then you have, you have listed it down. You have books on singing, you have videos on singing, most of your friends sing. So that is immersion. Immersion is like you are putting yourself in the thing, you are doing, you are living your life. That will bring that one word to you whenever people mention it. You want your friends wherever they are. When they hear the word sing, your name should come to their mind. When you hear the word sing anywhere, if your friends cannot remember you by one single word, you still need work to do. And it's because you are not immersed. When you're not immersed, you're like the person who has just some bit of water. Once in a while you sink and then once in a while you stop. But total immersion means like swimming in it. It becomes your total life, like every single thing you do. In your workplace, you are an accountant, but because you know how to sing, you volunteer to sing every single day, every single time when there's an the opportunity. Everybody's locked down, they are all at home. Your company is doing Zoom calls. You sing, you can volunteer and say, ask for this meeting, please. You allow me to just sing an encouraging 
um, over video so that people can watch. Put yourself out there, be totally immersed. Because again, in the COVID season, it is these trends that come naturally to you that for most people are going to be a way to go. And ultimately, look at how, how much attention you have given to your hands. I've been telling people, it tells you how important your hands are, but what else is important inside you that perhaps you are not paying attention to that this COVID season wants you to? The last item, the last item I have is this. I, I think every single person in the world is looking for these two characters in other people. Whether you are an armed robber, whether you are uh, the president of a nation, whether you are you know, a student in a classroom, whether you are in primary two, you are looking for somebody who is available and reliable. It's the two things when you have um, most of the time, it doesn't even matter whether you, 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 actually, you actually have competence or not. If you can be available and reliable in every space, most of the time, it does, your, your competence doesn't even matter. I can put it in one word, loyalty. Like you need to stay your guard in a certain area of operation, whether it is in your company, whether it is in a group that they have made you a secretary of, you need to have, make people know, like people should be able to vouch and say, oh, they ask for, if we, if we put the meeting at 10 p.m., she will show up. And this is a time to build that, that kind of character quickly. Let people bet that everybody will leave, but you will not. That is being available and being reliable. And it is one of the most important things when it comes to personal leadership. I think that people who are not even skilled, who don't even know how to do the job, if they can be available and reliable to their bosses quickly, they, they, they are placed uh, you know, on a high priority. And in fact, it is one of the lessons that I have even learned that most of the time we think we want the best people to work. But most of the time, they, they are, the best people are not even available or reliable. Most of the time, because best people are busy. They are also busy doing other things. But you see, sometimes you can take people who are just not, not the best, but they will be there. And you can trust that you can get, you know, they, they will be reliable. So um, in a nutshell, just to uh, wrap it up, um, again, again, what I'll say is these few words, and I really want you to think about it that we are in a time where the citizen cannot wait for the government. We are in a time where the student cannot wait for the teacher. We are in a time where the worker cannot wait for the employer. We are in a time where the believer cannot wait for the preacher. And today, even the health worker, I mean, I've said it time and again that a doctor is another doctor's patient. But today, it is so true that even the health worker needs as much help as we all do. Thank you for the, for the moment. And it's back to you. Oh, Chief, 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 Chief. This is, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Very, very timely message and very important as well. So for now, we are going to open the floor for questions. So I think, um, let me see. Oh, but Mr. Prince, we are really, really, really grateful. Really, really Pleasure grateful. So, man. Really, really grateful. So we are going to open the session for questions. So please, when you have a question, you can kindly raise up your hand so that you ask. Uh, and those watching us on Facebook, you can kindly leave your questions in the comment section. I'm going to read it out to the guests.
Any questions, please? Okay, uh, Mr. David, please you can kindly ask. Yeah, my hand is raised. Mr. Mr. David, can you hear us? Hello? Okay, also when you have a challenge with your network. Hello? Yeah, can you please hear us? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah, Steve, we can hear you. I think we lost him. Yeah. If, okay, Mr. Francis, you can kindly ask your question. Okay. Um, Mr. Mbofo, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank Francis. you. Yeah. Uh, my question is that in your, in your presentation, you definitely find people. Hello. Please, can I continue? Hello. Yes, can I continue? I think someone some wants to let him finish. Yeah, I think I'm so sorry. I'm awake. I'm trying to transmit from work. Uh, um, this is, is it okay? Can I talk now? Yeah. Uh, please, can I continue my question? Yeah, David, kindly. Continue, please. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. So um, in, in this world where when some people find out you want to flow and do what you do best, and they will start to tag you with the name such as this person rushes too much. Uh, <laughs> we are having a meeting. Why do you want to sing? Is it a time for it? So uh, my question is that... Uh, what is the encouragement there for such people? Uh, how would they still keep flowing when there are those oppositions? You see, maybe there is this other uh, lady who also sings in the same workplace or choir and will have that sort of jealousy. Oh, or Russian Michael do and all that. How do you still flow in such a position? All right, Dave, can I, Ernest? Okay, um, I, I think, uh, I mean, this is the time, COVID has proven to us that you see, um, everyone for himself, God for us all. It is, it is clear today and much more important how independent we are of each other. No matter how connected you were to your mother today, even when your mother comes to you, you don't want to go close to her. It's, it's amazing. And so when people who are a little bit beyond ourselves come to us and become the reason why we cannot progress, um, the question we, we need to really ask ourselves is how much uh, you know, stakes they have in our lives. Um, considering that even today, our mothers may not be able to determine or say do certain things for us. Um, what I'll just say to encourage the person is, I mean, we've heard it time and again that life is laid forward but understood backwards. And for most people, they are going to understand you looking back. I mean, as we keep going forward, most of the time, even people who claim to know what they are doing to a certain degree are still in the gray area. They don't really know what specifically what uh, is going to happen in, in, in their future or because of what they are doing. But you see, immersion never fails. If you commit to do something over and over and over again, it, it doesn't fail. We know it, it's been said that, okay, when you do 10,000 hours of any skill, you become a master in this space. So people just need to understand that a lot of those who are around us are going to 
understand as looking back. And so our commitment to the goal is to make sure that we go through the journey. They will only realize when we are finally there. Dave, I don't know if this makes any sense. And you see, we talked about truth and reality. So that is one of the truths. The truth is that people will understand you when you are finally there. Understanding, so the understanding of people can wait, but action must be taken. If you want people to understand you before you move, it, 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 won't, it doesn't happen like that. Understanding has to wait, but action has to happen. And that is the truth of life. Impressive. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Prince. Thank you, Dave. Um, was it Francis who was speaking? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I don't, okay. Mr. Francis, you can kindly ask your question. Okay. I guess I wanted him to throw more light on the talent and the competence. Um, if you can. Okay, the, the talent and the competence. Don't worry, these yes. days we just use big English interchangeably in some of these things. I mean, you can even Google and find a lot of things about talent and then competence. Um, what I attempted to do really for you to appreciate the fact that competence is small, it's a lot of them, but really we can say the same thing for talent and um, that you will have a lot of talents. But I put in competence just so that you can appreciate that um, there are certain things you may not necessarily, they may not necessarily be your talents, but it, they, they come easy to you. Uh -huh. And so you have all those things. The most important thing is um, you note that, okay, so these things, uh, I'm able to really flow in them. So let me intentionally put them in a book so that I can pay attention to them. And now out of what I have written, which one is my strongest? As soon as I note that, okay, this one seems to be my strongest, I extract that one and put that one on a different sheet. And now I want to go, you know, absolute immersion in that area. Francis, I, I hope this is this makes sense. Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so please, your book. Um, is there any bookshop that in case I need one, I can walk into and then uh, unfortunately there is no bookshop, but when you find me, you'll find the book wherever you are. Okay. Yeah, right. it will come to you. So you, I'm sure we can talk about that later. Yeah, I think even after the section, we will send an email with the numbers that you can reach out in case you want a copy of the book in order to yeah. get one. Yeah. And also the okay. PPT so that you can go through once again. Yeah. yeah. Please, any further questions? Okay, I, Mr. Prince, I think we are still digesting what you said. Though. Our <laughs> brains are our, our brains are heavy. <laughs> but I also I would I would like to ask a question concerning the total immersion. I I wanted to know. Um, do you do you in your it's a personal question though? Do you think in your opinion we really have the available resources to actually develop our talent as youth of Ghana? In your personal opinion? Um, um yeah, at least I, I've been able to travel. I've I've done a lot of trips around the country. Uh, thankfully, the 10 regions when it was still 10. Um, having met the young people like 
you know, doing fantastic work everywhere. Um, I, I, I think I, I can in all humility uh, say that the issue really is not resources. You see, when we're young, they told us this, and I, and I don't know about you, but whenever I heard that statement, I got angry. What do you mean by it is not resources? You see, but today, unfortunately, I also agree to that statement that it is not about resources. It is about resourcefulness. It is not about resources, but resourcefulness. I mean, if we were talking about resources, Africa should be like, by now, you see, the, 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 the rocket that is going to Mars should be taken off in Accra if it was about you know, resources. We are, we are, you can be fair to use the same word that we, Africa is immersed in resources, but it, it, it has not really you know, been any, any useful. And so yeah, as young people, we need to move away. And sometimes I know it, it will, the way life plays it, this is not truth you will accept. Um, but most of the time you want to leave it to know. Because ultimately we all get to the point in our life, we realize, oh, ah, so it wasn't about the resources. We all get there. Except that some people will get there earlier than other people. But um, having heard from you know, the, the, the things we have spoken about today, you want to do your own research around these things to really appreciate it better. And, but I'm sure it will still lead to the same conclusion that really it has never been about uh, resources, but resourcefulness. And when I say that, for example, when you're talking about immersion, especially in, in our setting, what I see as a setback to immersion most of the time is because um, we don't seem to have a safety net. And today I was discussing with a friend who is on the school, a safety net. I mean, in the West, people have safety nets and so they are able to really go out there and then um, experiment with a lot of things. If your father is Bill Gates, you are not looking for a job. You are looking for the place where you can be, what, what you will be happiest about doing. And so if for somebody who doesn't have any money sitting in the, in the family account to be able to still do immersion, you have to understand that there, there's going to be a cost to it. Because you want to go down that lane, it is going to cost you. And it's going to cost you because you don't have a safety net. Your father is not uh, um, Sam Jonah. If your father is Sam Jonah, you can walk out there and do everything that you would really love to do. But if you want to do what you love to do, understand and accept the fact. Just You have to embrace it, the fact that it is going to cost you. But ultimately, immersion doesn't fail. It may take a little longer. It may take a while, but immersion will never fail. There's going to come a time where it will all begin to, you know, uh, it will all come together. Why? Because your heart knows what it wants. And when you give it to your heart, it will amaze you. I, I'm personally a, 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 an example of what I'm saying. Um, having gone to school to study environmental science, um, in my second year, just telling myself that I have graduated myself and then going out there to do the things that I really love to do. And I can be frank with you that in final year, my roommate, Dave is my roommate, and he can attest to this. In fact, most of the things they were teaching, I, like I was, so, I was lost because, you know, my, my, I, I seem to have been immersed in, in something else. But this is something that I, I was just passionate about. And life has an interesting way of bringing to you what your heart is actually looking for. It cost me several times. I mean, it cost me my GPA. I remember sometimes going into quizzes or going to examination halls and friends wanting to help me. And so they want me to sit by them and I, I'll go and sit somewhere else. And they even get angry. But you, you are not in the lecture theater. We are trying to help you to, you're going to sit somewhere. And I'm like, you see, you need to accept the fact that because of certain parts you have taken, there's a consequence to it. It is not fair for, me to go home with the first class after all that I did. It's not fair to those who sat down all night to learn. Uh -huh. And so we have to understand that because we don't have safety nets, it will cost us, but the cost will be paid for in the long run 
because the mention doesn't fit. Impressive, impressive. Thank you so much. Please, any further questions? Okay. So, Mr. Prince, I think we are bringing the curtains down. Since um, there's no further question, I would like to say a very big thank you on behalf of leaders of change and all the participants today and those who joined us on Facebook that we have. Okay, okay. I think there's one question from Mr. Kobe. He said, do we all have to aspire to be leaders? I think we can. Uh, Kobe, <laughs> the truth is that whether you aspire or not, there's going, to, there's going to come a day you wish you were influential. There's, that day is going to come. And in Africa, it has happened to us through chaos when sometimes we were looking for independence and then all of a sudden somebody is able to knock somebody off. And so we call the person, the one who is the winner, we call him the leader. But as we trickle it down even to our level and in our space, there's going to come a time you wish you really understood these tools. And, and what leadership really is. And that is why I always prefer to use the word personal when I talk about leadership. Because even having to raise your kids is leadership. Having to, how you uh, kind of engage your own siblings at home, your parents. I mean, you can be the youngest person in the room, but you can be the reason why everybody is on track. And that is also leadership. And so it, to, to aspire, it is even more greater because again, I mentioned on this conversation that um, for all of us, our, our purpose destination is a place of influence. Wherever your purpose, wherever the kind of destination you call your purpose, when you get there, you need to lead. That is why everybody who is in such a space, when you sit back and you look at them, you call them leaders. Just begin to think, think about the people you call leaders. You realize that they are more in the spaces where it looks like they are actually in the center of their purpose. And in those spaces, their leadership is needed the most. So the one who aspires for it does themselves a very great service, considering that they even move faster than the, their times because they learn quickly, they get to know the answers straighter they begin to engage their, you know, whatever levels they are, and then it moves them forward. Yeah. I hope this is useful for me. That's great, that's great. Please, any further questions? Okay, I think it's um, past one hour. So Mr. Prince, um, like I was saying, and on behalf of um, Leaders of Change and all the participants today, we want to say a very big thank you to you for your time, for your insight, and for availing yourself, and for being reliable as well, which was the final point which I was taking. <laughs> thank you so much for making time for us, and we are so, so grateful. So I think people are asking for the PPT. So what you do is that we will create a Google link. I will do that. I'll send an email to those who registered through the link and also contact of our guests so that in case you need a book, you can contact him and get one. And you can even buy some and also share it to your friends and loved ones because it's been so inspiring within this short period. And we've actually learned a lot. So we are so, so grateful. And we want to say a very big thank you. And we are hoping that in, in the future, there will be more collaborative works like this so that we can share ideas and cross link. Thank you so much for making time for us. God bless you. Thank and you. all the participants who also attended, we are so, I'm so grateful for your time and for your patience. And I would like to say a very big Please, thank somebody you. Somebody has asked a question behind the stage. 
Yeah, what are the PPT copy gods? Yeah, yes, I said we will send it. So I'll be sharing the PPT through the link. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, thank you very much. And I hope everyone stays safe and do have a very wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Thank you.